Thanks for checking out this episode of Should You Watch? And this is Should You Watch Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, short answer to that right up front in case people don't want to go through all the reasons. Um, if you really had a desire to see this film, go ahead and see it once. Don't see it in the theater, though. You can wait until it's on a movie channel or Netflix or if you want to get a Blu-ray or whatever. Wait for it. Um, because it's good, but not good enough to spend, what, $10 plus at the theater. Um, so some positives about the film. The base story is a very good base story. Uh, it's been around for a long time. It's a very beloved kind of murder mystery story from Agatha Christie, who originally wrote the novel for it in 1934, I believe, is when it was published. So there's nothing wrong with the actual story because it's been around for a long time. Everybody knows it's very highly respected. So the base material is good. Um, also, I think that Michael Green, the person who ended up adapting the, the uh, book for the screenplay, I think he did a pretty solid job in that. Um, I, but then again, I actually have not read the book before, so I guess I can't say that it's like amazing. It came off as, as being... Um, coherently written for a script and the dialogue was decent and so Michael Green I think did a good job. Michael Green by the way has written a lot of stuff. He wrote the screen bay, screenplay and I think the story for like Alien Covenant uh, which I actually haven't seen. I actually heard it's not all that great but he's done some other stuff. I think he did like uh, the screenplay for Green Lantern, uh, screenplay for there was something else that was kind of big big-ish recently that he did, but I know he did some for um, a few episodes of, damn it, now I'm forgetting, because <laughs> I looked it up, but trust me, look him up, Michael Green, He's he has a long list of, of work that he's done with, with writing, so good for him. Um, so yeah, I, th I think the script was decent. Uh, the actors there are a lot of good actors who they brought in for it and probably my favorite of of who pulled off their roles uh, michelle pfeiffer did uh, quite a good job um daisy ridley who a lot of people know from um, star wars uh, force awakens she did a really good job and kenneth branagh who actually also directed this film he played hercule poirot um the world famous detective in the film and the titular character um not titular character the main character <laughs> titular character would mean he's in the title but um Kenneth Branagh did a good job in the beginning of the film I think he came off as overacting a little bit but as the film went on I felt like he kind of settled down and you know was all, was even keel with the acting he wasn't like too crazy with it by the way, I'm sorry, the uh, the light, the natural light outside keeps going up and down. It must be clouds, so sorry for that. But anyway, so he, yeah, he did a, he did a good job. Uh, like I said, I wasn't really feeling him in the beginning. Then he got better at the end, so it was good. Um, but now for the negatives of the film. Uh, oh, the uh, one other positive real quick. The costuming. The costuming was really well done, and the, the set pieces were very good. It was very appropriate for its time. It looked good. The negatives. There was some overacting. There was actually a lot of overacting. A lot of the characters overacted. Pretty much almost all of them, um, except for the three that I, that I said as being particularly good. There were a few who were... I'm sorry, something caught my attention outside. Um, a few of them were were like in the middle, like did a decent job, but some people overacted, overacted like crazy. Worst of which was Johnny Depp. Uh, Johnny Depp's character, the way he played that was way over the top, not good at all. Um, I've seen him do that with some other roles recently too. I don't know what's going on, but but with since there were so many actors who were overacting throughout the film, I'm wondering if it was their choices or if it was a directorial choice. Because, like I said, Kenneth Branagh was overacting in the beginning of the film, and he was the director, so he may have kind of asked for that, which if that's the case, I don't really understand why you would do that. It's kind of weird. But um, that was one of my main issues, was that overacting. The other thing is, there were some really bad uh, directorial choices with the camera shots. 
Uh, cinem cinematically, it looked good, but there were a bunch of camera shot choices that just seemed odd to me. And it just seemed kind of like, oh, let's do something different. And so they do something different, and they do it in a part of the film where you're trying to like really pay attention. And, so, and then whatever camera angle or, or special shot they use, it actually takes your attention away from what's happening. Because you're just like, oh, that's weird. That's odd. Why are you doing that? Um, two prime examples of that. They had one moment where they were uh, looking in like train cars. So they shot it from above looking down. So all you see is the tops of people's heads pretty much. And it's like following them around to like a few of the train cars as they talk. That's fine to do, like, kind of like a quick shot, but it was, like, for a solid, like, minute and a half, two minutes or something, and it was just really distracting. And it's just, like, I can't see much of anything. I want to see the people talking to each other so you can see expression, you know, not just looking down because there wasn't anything all that important that you needed to see it from top down. So it just seemed like a weird choice it took me out of the film i wasn't able to really pay attention what was going on because i was just like this is weird um the other one that was really bad was when uh hercule perot first gets onto the orient express train and he's walking through all the train cars and you're seeing like some of the other characters as he passes him but it's all done from outside of the train so you're just seeing him through the windows. Well, there are large swaths of metal in between windows, and you can't see anything there. So you keep having your view obstructed as it's following Poirot, and it gets hard to watch fast. Because um, you, you, your eyes, like, you focus for a second on seeing him walking through it, and then you're, you're, like, unfocused because it's a piece of metal obstructing him, so you can't see. So it's just, like, this constant, like... Like, do this to yourself and see if you don't feel dizzy eventually. It was a terrible idea. Terrible shot idea. You can do it very quickly. Like, maybe he goes through one car and you do it that way. But he went through several cars and it was like that. And it's just totally distracting, nauseating, not good. Um, so that was, I mean, those were kind of the things. Um, but would I say that this is a bad movie? No, it's not a bad movie. It's decent. I mean, like, I enjoyed it enough, mainly because the story was good, there was a, some good acting in it, and the screenplay was written pretty well from what I could tell. So I would recommend it for people who really wanted to see it. Now, if you want to see it just because you want the story, I would say don't spend your time doing that if you're also a person who's cool with reading. Just go get the Agatha Christie book, Murder on the Orient Express, and read that because I guarantee the story is going to be a lot better that way. So I, I know it's going to be a lot more of a time commitment, but if you're really looking for the story, it is a good story. So go ahead and check it out that way. Anyway, this has gone kind of long, so I want to cut it off there. But in the end, I guess I can give it like a star rating. Out of five stars, I think I would give it a... It's a three. It's a three. And I was thinking two and a half because I'm like, eh, about it. But no, I'd, I'd give it three because it has just enough to knock it over halfway uh, with the with the good acting and, and the uh, set pieces and the costuming being really good and, and the base material and the screenplay were solid. So say three stars, three stars out of five. Anyway, if you like this, let me know. If you didn't like it, also let me know. You can send me an email, brutalbattlepodcast at gmail.com. I'll do more of these... Um, Hopefully, I'll do more of these Should You Watch. Uh, I had done some Should You Read, which were comic book ones, but I haven't followed up on that, but mainly because they weren't getting a whole lot of hits. So, um, you know, check those out, and if the hits on them go up, then maybe I'll do some more, but this might be more popular. Anyway, thank you, everyone, for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.